Hey everybody, it's Lon Seidman and we are back with our monthly sponsored video from Plex. And this month we're taking another look at live TV because they have made it free until the end of June 2020 without a Plex pass. So that's a good reason to check it out. Uh, and they've added a few new features, most of them under the hood improvements, which we're going to explore. But we're also going to look at Chromecasting in this video, which is a great new feature. So lots to talk about here. Now, I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure, this is a paid sponsorship from Plex. However, all the opinions you're about to hear are my own, and they are not reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So let's get into it now and see what this live TV stuff is all about. Now, in order to get live TV to work, you do need a tuner to pull in over the air content. Uh, if you go to lon.tv slash plex tuners, you'll be brought to this page with a listing of compatible tuners that you can use. And you've got to look for compatibility in two different areas. One is you need to make sure it's compatible with plex, first of all, and this list of tuners are all compatible. And then you also need to make sure they're compatible with the server that you're plugging the tuner into. Uh, now, my favorite is the HD Home Run tuners, which work over your network. And as you can see, these work with every device that Plex supports. Uh, in full disclosure, they are a sponsor here on the channel occasionally. They're not sponsoring this video, but they're the easiest to get working because they just show up on your network. And when you go in to find the tuner, which I'll show you in a minute, they just pop up. Uh, other tuners on the list here are USB tuners, so they'll connect to your server via a USB port. But again, compatibility will vary based on the device. Uh, they also have listings for other parts of the world as well, so you can find what works for your particular region. Now, to get this to work, you do need to log into your Plex server with a computer and a web browser, go into Settings, and then select your server that you're using, and go to Live TV and DVR. You'll be brought to this section here. Now, you'll see that I already have my HD Home Run Prime Tuner set up. And in an earlier video, we actually went through the start to finish process of getting this set up for the DVR service. And this process is actually the same as it is just for live TV. So you may want to check out that video to get more detail. But it's pretty simple. You just go over here to Add Device. And what it's going to do is look on your network to see what tuners are available or if you have one directly attached via USB and it's compatible, uh, it will show up here. And as you can see, I've got another HD home run tuner on my network, this one being an over the air tuner. I can click continue here. It's found a bunch of channels that that tuner is already tuned to uh, and it will match those up to the channel guide so I get all of the proper channels listed when we look at something like we see on screen here. And if I click continue, that will get it added to the mix and then it will download some program data. Uh, that takes a little bit of time to get that listing set up, but once it does that initial download, you're good to go and you can start watching live TV. Now, once you get everything set up, you're going to see live TV added to your list of media sources. And the default interface is what you see here. They call this what's on. And you can go through and see what things are on right now. Uh, a lot of this is kind of a curated thing where you've got movies in one section and TV shows in another. You can also tune to things that uh, they think are more popular that you might want to watch right now. Uh, but if you prefer a traditional channel guide, you can go up here to guide and that will give you the grid layout that you might be used to. Now, one thing to keep in mind when you're watching live TV is that a lot of these broadcasts coming in over the air are being sent to you as MPEG-2 video because at the time I'm recording this video, MPEG-2 is the standard that broadcasters use. So as we tune into Dr. Phil here, uh, once this starts up, we'll take a look at my server's control panel and see what it is sending to my device. So right now, uh, you can see here we're getting an MPEG-2 720p video, but it's direct playing because the NVIDIA Shield here is able to take care of that MPEG-2 video without any transcoding. So if I go over here and maybe tune over to uh, the CW, uh, this is a 1080i station, which means that we're going to get MPEG-2 video that's interlaced, and we have to de-interlace the video to play back on our NVIDIA Shield. And as you can see here, the NVIDIA Shield is able to direct play both. Now, the reason why I'm bringing this up is that if you are trying the free version of live TV, you need to make sure that your device that is playing back these videos or these channels is able to run with those codecs natively. Because if they can't, what's going to happen is that uh, your server is going to have to transcode or change that 
MPEG-2 video into MPEG-4, and that might not work if you don't have a PlexPass, which supports the faster hardware transcoding, which we've covered quite a bit here in the past. So my advice to you uh, is try this out because it is free, and try it out on a few different devices and see what works. Uh, let me show you what happens when we tune into the CW here with my Amazon Fire TV. So right now we've got the Fire TV playing back the very same channel as we are on the Shield. And if you look here on the left, you can see that we are having to transcode the video from that 1080i. Let me zoom in here for you. Uh, from that 1080i to H.264. But my Plex server, of course, has hardware transcoding on board, so it seems to be running just fine. It looks just fine. Uh, but my NVIDIA Shield is able to do all of this in hardware itself, which means that if I did not have a Plex Pass, uh, the experience here would be better on the Shield than it would be on the Fire TV. Uh, the good news, though, is that I've been testing a few smart TVs around the house, and those have been working just fine. Let's check out my Roku TV. So here we have my Roku TV here playing back the very same channel. It's working just fine. And remember, this is 1080i MPEG-2. And if we switch over to my server's control panel here, you can see the Roku is able to direct play this video because it supports MPEG-2 and it supports deinterlacing. Uh, some Rokus do not, so if you have a Roku box and not a Roku TV, your experience might be different, which again is why you may want to just test this out on a few different TVs to make sure it's going to work in your environment. But the good news is that most smart TVs can support uh, MPEG-2 video and deinterlacing because most TVs, actually all TVs, have a tuner on board that can pull in this content over the air already and therefore they have all of the necessary decoders on board to take care of the video here for you. But again, it's going to vary from one device to another. Now, because it supports direct play, channel changes are now a lot faster as well. So again, we're on our NVIDIA Shield here. If I go over to the channel guide and maybe go from uh, the CW to my NBC affiliate here, you can see that although it's not super quick, it is changing channels a lot faster than it used to change them. So uh, not all that bad here when you want to go from one channel to the other. Uh, just a little bit of a delay, but certainly a uh, much lower delay than there used to be. So that was good. Another cool feature that they've added to most platforms now is you get a little picture in picture thing up here as you're tuning to different channels. So you can continue to uh, watch and listen to the content that you're watching as you're browsing through the guide as well. So that's pretty cool. Now I do recommend using Ethernet whenever possible to get your devices connected. This shield right now is connected up via Ethernet and my TV over there is as well. And the reason is, is that these MPEG-2 broadcasts consume a lot of bandwidth. And if you don't have a super fast wireless network with a good signal, you're going to see drop-offs and uh, stutters and delays and buffering and all the other bad things that happen when you don't have a good signal. So if you can, hook up a wired connection for the best performance. AC wireless works fine, but if you've got a lot of people on the network or your device isn't getting a super strong signal, you'll also have problems. So if you see that, uh, try to hook up with a wired connection and I think you'll be in much better shape. Now, one other cool thing that they've implemented with live TV watching is the ability to do it over Chromecasting. Uh, let's take a look at that with my iPhone. All right, so I've got a very inexpensive Chromecast here, the $35 device connected to my monitor. Yes, we could use the Shield for this, but I think it might be more fun to see how it works on the lower price device. And what I'm going to do here is just connect up Plex to that Chromecast. So I'm going to go ahead and select uh, my yellow Chromecast. I've got a million of these things now. Uh, there we go. And now we're connecting up. And once this gets going here, I could select Judge Judy, for example. And what it will do is tune to Judge Judy. Now it's giving me the choice of the HD or the SD version. I'm going to choose the HD one. And let's see what happens here when we go to Chromecast this over. Now at the time I'm recording this video, this is working on iOS, but not yet Android, but it will come to Android soon. And as you can see here, Judge Judy is up and running on screen. Now I'm going to go over to my server now and see what's happening. And as you can see, though, we are transcoding here to this device because it doesn't support MPEG-2, at least for what we're doing right now. So we are going to transcode here, but the cool thing is that uh, this is working 
on the Chromecast. And if I wanted to go back maybe and just see what else is on TV, I could select another show to watch here. So I could do maybe the Family Feud instead. So we'll uh, hit that and start watching that now. And again, we'll do that in HD and it's spinning right up. Now, the one good thing about the fact that we're using uh, the uh, transcoder here is that the Wi-Fi connection won't be as much of an impediment as it would be if we were doing an MPEG-2 watch. And as you can see here, it does take a little bit of time for these things to come up, but they do start working here pretty nicely on a very low-cost Chromecast. And this is a new feature that just got added recently. Uh, one other thing I did a little bit earlier is I connected up to my Google Home device upstairs. They call those Nest Hubs now, I guess. And those are basically little Google Homes with a screen. And one of the things that's always bugged me about it is that I can't watch live TV on it, uh, but now I can. I was able to Chromecast from my phone over to that Nest or Google Hub thing, and I could start playing TV on the device that I have in the kitchen, which I thought was really, really neat. So that's the status of live TV on Plex. And if you have a compatible tuner, again, it's free until the end of June to try out. So you can decide whether or not you want to go with the Plex Pass to get more features. Uh, obviously, the hardware transcoding is something that will be very valuable if you have lower end hardware like this uh, Chromecast here. Uh, but also great because you get the DVR recording capabilities with the Plex Pass as well. Let me know what you thought down in the comments below. And we'll be back with more Plex next month. And of course, keep those questions coming because those often help uh, give me ideas for future Plex content. That's going to do it for now. Until next time, this is Lon Seibin. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters, including Gold Level supporters, the Four Guys with Quarters podcast, Tom Albrecht, Rick Vestudo, Chris Allegretta. and Kalyan Kumar. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.